Hi, my name is Josephine and these are my creatures. Welcome back to my Celestial Goddess series. In this series, I create a goddess doll inspired by one of the planets in our solar system. Let's sit down and start the creation of Saturn. I have already created the Moon, Sun, Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars and Jupiter. Saturn is next in line after Jupiter. Saturn is named after the Roman god of time, wealth, liberation and periodic renewal. I want my dolls to represent a wide variety of people, so I try to make them as different as possible to what I have already created in this series. I landed on Viperine as my base doll. She has an interesting face sculpt and it's been a while since I repainted her and I really enjoyed it the last time. For now, I am planning on using her body too, but just a heads up, she is going to be turning into a hybrid of three dolls. So stay tuned to see what the other two dolls are. I prepped the doll by removing her head, taking off her factory face with acetone and removing her hair. After all that prep work, I think I deserve a little break. Breaks are nothing without a little snack. Luckily, I didn't have to eat this myself. Say hello to my new little helper. His name is Murmug and he is a kitten we adopted from a local shelter. He was born feral, but has made huge progress in the month and a half he has been with us. Isn't he the cutest furball ever? Okay, okay, back to work. Let's cover that bald head. I realized I didn't have a light-skinned blonde in my lineup of goddesses yet. So I picked the closest colors to blonde that I had in my hair stash. It was kind of slim pickings, I don't really like creating blondes, so I settled with Golden Glory and Lemon Drop, which worked out nicely because Saturn is described to have a pale yellow hue to it possibly from the ammonia crystals present on the planet. Viperine's head was a bit difficult to reroute because of the crater left by her removed head snakes. I plan on giving her a high ponytail like you saw on my sketch, so I'm not worried about running out of hair. I will use what fibers I have left and the rest will be covered by the hairstyle. After locking the loose plugs inside her head with glue, I secured the high ponytail with craft wire. Wire is more reliable than rubber bands when securing doll hair, plus it looks nicer than an elastic band. So a win-win situation. I ran out of Mr. Super Clear before Christmas actually, and I finally got some more. While I was in the business of buying craft supplies, I placed an order from Green Stuff World for these color shifting paints, which are my favorite. I also ordered some epoxy sculpt and my favorite magic sculpt. I was curious to know if there are any differences between them. And my little rascals are obviously helping me out by making sure the neighbors don't sneak up on me. I love Viperin's detailed body, but it's not going to work well for this character, so I decided to swap it out. I recently watched Arcane on Netflix, and I really liked V's body shape. Despite her strong, round shoulders, she still looks feminine. Barb and Alex from Enchantarium also created a boy Monster High hybrid for their Leo doll, so I used that video to guide me. I harvested some feminine legs and hands from this Abby doll. Regular Monster High girl hands would be way too tiny, and the boy hands are too masculine, so Abby's hands are perfectly in the middle. To connect the new limbs to the body, I use wire and hot glue. I fill in and reinforce the connection with epoxy sculpt this time. My first impression is that it's very similar to magic sculpt, but not the same. 
It's way softer and it has a hard time sticking to things, except my gloves. Very annoying, by the way. It stays moldable for longer, but when it's freshly mixed, it's almost too moldable. Magic Sculpt is firm and I prefer that. Epoxy is easier to smooth out than Magic Sculpt, but all in all, I think I'm just more used to working with Magic Sculpt and that's the reason why I prefer it. I am still missing a muscular body type from my lineup and I think Saturn is perfect for that because after Jupiter it has the largest mass. And a buff body type is perfect to convey that. I have no idea what all the muscles are called or how they connect to each other, but I looked up a reference photo on Pinterest that I liked and followed it best I can. In addition to the six pack, she ended up getting some back muscles and a bigger booty and some muscles on the thighs as well. Sculpting muscles was both fun and challenging. I did make them a bit too pronounced. They do need to look like they are under the skin, so I will fix that once the clay is fully cured. to include this clip of Murray Mercus sleeping, isn't he the cutest little furball ever? I use wall spackle to quickly tone down my extreme muscle definition. I got carried away sculpting them and I do need it to look like she has some skin on top of them. The wall speckle is easy to sand and it's softer than epoxy, so I will not lose all the detail I painstakingly created. I quickly primed the areas I sculpted on before painting over them. I did several coats of paint and Mr. Super Clear. A tiny bit of blushing with pan pastels will enhance the sculpting. I seal my work with several layers of MSC. I am still in a hunt for a varnish I can find in my country that I actually like, so I just need to hope that MSC is enough. Viperine's head gets primed with MSC too before I start the face up. Viperine has a very angular face shape that I think will work well with her custom body. I needed some makeup inspiration, so I went to Pinterest and searched for some makeup looks from the 70s. I found really nice pictures of Cher that I used to inspire me with this face up. I landed on 70s disco vibe as my inspiration because Saturn represents time, liberation and periodic renewal. And those things really match up with the hippie movement of the 70s. And I really wanted to make those flared pants I had sketched up in the beginning. I always like my face-ups until I add the irises and pupils, and this doll was no exception. I struggled so badly with them. I really just needed to push through it, though. Giving her purple eyeshadow with a shimmery lid really helps boost my motivation because it's my favorite eyeshadow look on dolls, and I have created it in the past, this time, though, I used my new color shifting paint in the color Solar Anomaly to spice things up a bit and make it a bit different. In the inspiration picture, Cher has really glowy cheeks with lots of blush and a glossy soft pink lip. I tried my best to emulate that on my doll, and it was not too difficult because I love detailing the doll's skin with pan pastels and pearlex powders. I thought this camera angle was the best for showcasing my cross the old hands, which is obviously what my viewers are here to see, right? Comment down below if your hands are crusty from the winter too. 
filling her big forehead with the planet's symbol is a must. Because I also pulled up all her hair to a high ponytail and it's just giving a massive forehead with non-existent blonde eyebrows. I seal the face for the final time before glossing her eyes and lips with Tamiya Gloss Glaze. We can release her from her hair burrito and then put her head back on. This was actually so difficult and I was so worried I was going to absolutely ruin the face up. So I ended up turning off the camera and praying to the crafting gods for a good outcome. I did end up cracking her face but it's under her chin so you can't really see it so I dodged a bullet there. Phew! I grabbed a pair of shoes from my stock box and gave them a light makeover with paint. I gathered all the materials for this project from my stash. So purple, yellow and a shiny silver fabric will complement the planet's yellow hue and my 70s disco hippie vibe. These two ribbons will make great accents on the doll. I made some patterns of camera because you guys have seen me do this like a hundred times already. This iridescent scale fabric is super pretty and I already made a pair of pants from this fabric in this series, so it's good to have some continuity amongst the dolls. I start the assembly with the darts and then I add the gores to create a full bell bottom for the pants. After that is the front center seam. To create the two pant legs, I close the inseam on both of them. This fashion fabric is very thin, so to help it look smoother, I added a lining just on the thighs out of this soft velvet. I put on the lining first and then the actual pants to be able to loosely stitch the layers together and then go in and neatly hand sew the waist area. This silver ribbon was perfect once cut to size as a belt. It reminds me of crystals or ice particles that are very common in Saturn's harsh environment. I didn't want any bulky closures and to be honest I never undress my dolls once I'm done with them. So I would just sew this tiny area shut. I ended up modifying my original drawing. I landed on this strange cape-like piece of clothing that will have a very fitted upper collar part. I need this to fit well and be stiff, so cotton is a good choice. I cut out the pattern pieces and doubled them up using glue. I glue the seam allowances under for a neat finish. The collar piece gets sewn and turned inside out. The collar gets stitched into the main shoulder piece before I arrange the satin ribbons according to my sketch. Saturn's rings are the feature that defines the planet and makes it so recognizable. I didn't want to do the classic halo headpiece, but to really be smart about including the rings in the design. I glued the ribbons down once I was happy about their placement. The cape looked a little plain, so I played around with the same crystals I used as her belt. This diamond pattern helped break the masculine shape of the shoulder piece the best. Because I already sewed the pants shut, I decided to do the same thing to the cape as well. At first I thought of adding a lace-up closure, but it felt too messy with the extra ribbon hanging in the back. To give her more coverage and a regal goddess feel, I added a piece of yellow organza in a high-low cut to reveal the midriff and all my hard sculpting work. And with that, she is done.
I added small finishing touches to her off camera, like some jump ring jewelry, fabric armbands to hide some of the imperfections on the paint job, and a thin headband to fill in her forehead some more and make her look more goddess-like. It also plays into the disco feel of the doll. I am super happy with her outfit. It's different from the other dolls in the series, which is what I wanted to prove upon from Jupiter's video. She really is a weird amalgamation of inspirations all in one, but I think it works and she turned out very unique. She stands out from the group as an individual, but there are enough of the same elements to keep her feeling like she is still part of it. We are still missing Neptune, Uranus, and Pluto. Please comment down below which one you are most excited for. I have plans for all three of them and I just can't choose for myself. So help me out and definitely leave a comment. Thank you so much for watching. Please leave me a comment. I would love to know what you think of Saturn. Until next time, bye. <laughs> Until next time. Bye. <laughs>